Hello guys, my name is Vivs here from Design Coder. Previously, Gary has been building the design for this app Speechly and in this video onwards, I'm going to be telling you the development of this app. Now, whether you're from SlideNerd who's watching this video or from Design Course or from some other place, don't worry about it. We will take one step at a time and try to understand how to build the app or the design that Gary has made so far. First, we need the right tool that's going to work for us. It's going to be Eclipse or Android Studio. Now, here's what I suggest. Eclipse, at the time of recording this video, is outdated. In other words, Google is not going to support updating the SDK or providing you plugins and stuff if you're going to use Eclipse. So let's stick to the default, which would be Android Studio in that case. On my Mac, I'm just going to hit Command Space here and I'm going to type Android Studio. And once I do that, you notice that I already have it installed. But if you're unfamiliar with the process of installation of Android Studio, you can simply go here to my channel SlideNerd under playlist. I have videos on how to install the Android Studio in the first playlist, which is Android Tutorial for Beginners. Now, Android Studio keeps changing every three weeks or so. And therefore, that video which you find there might not be the latest at the time you're watching this video. The starting screen of Android Studio looks like this. Let's take a closer look at it. It's for version 1.2.1.1. If you're using a different version, it's quite possible that your appearance for Android Studio now looks different. On the left hand side, you have a list of recent projects. If you haven't made any, this area is going to be blank. On the right hand side, you have this option that says start a new Android Studio project. A project in Android Studio is a collection of files that would be images, audio, video, data, text, and all those things needed to make your app work. So I'm going to click the first option here. And at this point, I'm taken to the screen where it says configure your new project. I'm going to call the application as Speechly. And I'm going to give a company domain. A company domain is basically a Java package. In fact, it's multiple folders that you need to specify out here. For example, in my case, it says designcoder.webs.speechly, which simply means that there is going to be a folder called design coder inside which there'll be a folder called webs inside which there's a folder called speechly and all the project files or Java files are going to be placed inside the folder speechly. You can select a three level or a four level folder depending on what you are comfortable with. There's a project location out here. In my case, I'm going to put it inside a folder on my users section here where it's called Speechly once again. I'm going to just hit next at this point and here I get to select the devices on which I'm going to run our app. As of now in the series, I'm going to run only on the phone and the tablet out here. Now, as we talk about the paid courses later, we will jump into the other devices that exist out here as well. I'll just click next at this point and it gives me the option to select a template. A template out of these is not going to make much difference in your code because you can always build what you haven't chosen over here. The idea is simple. If you want certain kind of setup for your app, like maybe you want multiple tabs out there or maybe you want a map in your app. All those things can be preset if you take a template. In my case, I'm going to select the simplest template which says add no activity and I'll get into a minute on why I chose that template. I'm going to just hit finish over here. And at this point, Android Studio is going to start building something and it's going to pop up a larger screen where it shows me some tips and it gives me some other ideas. I'm going to close the tip pop up right here by saying close. And on the left side, you will notice that there are three tabs. There's something called captures, there's something called project and a structure. I will click this area that is project and you will immediately notice that there is something called an app over here. If you expand this, there is something called manifest, Java and Arias. Now Java folder out here will contain all our code files. The Arias folder out here, if you expand it, you will notice that there is something called drawable, map map values we'll be adding all our layouts or screen designs right inside the arias folder inside something called a layout now currently my app does not have any screens in other words when the user clicks on the icon he or she is not going to see anything or they're going to encounter an error a screen is basically an activity in the world of android you go to java package here or the folder if you expand this, you notice that we have this design .speechly built over here. And there is one more that has Android test written beside it. We don't want this one. We want the first one which doesn't have the test word. We're going to just right click here and we're going to say new. 
and then you notice that there is this option called an activity like i said the screen in the world of android is an activity and i'm going to select the second option that says blank activity just going to click on it once i do that i get this nice big dialog here that is going to ask me a lot of details let's take a look at what they are now the nice thing is android studio already has filled a lot of details for us if you go to activity name here it says main activity which would be the java file name there's activity underscore main which would be the xml name of the file the title again is going to be main activity but we can call this as speechly over here then there's the menu that's going to pop up which is going to be menu underscore main there's the option here that says launcher activity now remember your app may have several screens but when the user taps on the icon which screen do you want to start that would be the launcher activity in our case i want this screen to be the launcher activity so i'll select that once I do that, I have the package specified at the bottom here. And if I go down all the way, I can just hit finish. And at this point, my activity is going to be added inside the folder. I also noticed that activity underscore main over here is popping open over here, which is going to be the XML file within which you're going to do your layout work. Before we see the app run on the screen, we see this nice rendering problem or error at the bottom. Welcome to the world of programming. People ask me all the time on my channel, how can I be a better programmer? How can I know everything? The idea is very simple. Google every single word or phrase that you don't understand. For example, you see the statement here that says could not initialize blah, blah, blah. Just copy that and go and type on Google and find out what people are saying about it. If you take a look, there are results from Stack Overflow. Let's open that in a new tab and try to understand what is going on. You notice that there is this workaround by this guy that says manually build a project blah 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 let's try that workaround but before doing this let's go to our code file that would be inside this package name here on the left hand side called the main activity i go to main activity here and you notice that right now i have this line over here on my action bar activity and there is this nice error once again that says android support app action bar activity is deprecated once again the rule is simple you don't understand what is going on just google once again being the helpless fellow i am i'm gonna simply type it on google and i'm gonna get a lot of results out here and you will notice going through these results that people will say that action bar activity is dead and you should actually replace it with something called the app compat activity if you go back to our android studio now there is this crossover here and it says deprecated now deprecated simply means you're not supposed to use it in the current version android changes in every version the version right now is 22 at the time of recording this video till 21 action bar activity was working perfectly fine but from 22 they want you to use something else in place of this and that would be the app compat activity which is why you have a stroke over this action bar activity i'm going to remove that and i'm going to enter app compat activity over here once i do that you notice that there are no more errors right we have fixed it now coming back to activity underscore main dot xml let's try to fix the error over here if you remember the workaround here it says build and rebuild the project so let's do that we go to the top here at this area where there's the build menu available and we are going to hit rebuild project out here once we do that we notice that the error has still not vanished and for that we have the second part which says manually sync the project that is synced with the gradle files in the toolbar or from the tools android menu now there are two ways you can make your project sync with the gradle files one is you can go here at the top and you have this option right here that says sync project with gradle files or you can go to tools you can go to android and there's the same option available which is sync project with gradle files let's try to do this once we do that we again get the message here saying gradle build has finished and if you go further, you will notice that area which says press refresh in the toolbar above the layout editor. So in my layout editor, activity underscore main not XML right here at the top is this button called refresh. Let's try hitting that button here. And once done, take a look at this. Bam, we fixed that error with simply Google. Now we all would like to see how the app looks at this point by running it on a device, right? There are two options for doing that. At the top here, there is this button called run if you take a look at this you can just zoom in and there's this button that says run app now this is going to launch the app on a very slow emulator that is provided by default by android studio we are going to use a much faster third-party emulator that is going to be integrated with android studio 
called Jenny Motion, which is right here. Now, if you're not sure on how to set this Jenny Motion to work with Android Studio, you can go to my channel, Slide Nerd, under playlist. This one, Slide Nerd Creative, has video number 18, which covers that precisely. So let's go back and start this in Jenny Motion. I'm just going to click on the icon over there and that's going to pop up this dialog that's going to let me choose different devices i'm going to select the first one which is version 4.3 and i'm going to say start over here once i do that my emulator is going to launch so there my emulator has finally launched i'm just going to unlock my device here by sliding to the right side and i'm going to go back to our app here and hit this run button at the top that says run app once i do that gradle is going to execute task at the bottom that you see here that says executing task and you get this dialog that sees where do you want to run your app in my case i'm going to choose that emulator which i just launched and i'm going to say use the same device for all future launches and i'm going to click ok out there once i do that there is my emulator coming out there i'll click ok some other app crashed out there and there is speechly running which says hello world at the time of making this video now we need to add our layout we need to add all the fancy widgets that gary designed in his previous videos and we are going to take a look at how to do that in the next video onwards all the videos covering the design, the Android part, and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.